proper place. I think that uh, that I can teach this because I've had several years to learn how to put money in its proper place. Jesus said in uh, verses 19, well, let me give you the golden text. The golden text of our lesson. Somebody want to quote it? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or riches. You've just got to, uh, uh, and that takes money to live, and I'm not going to tell you that we need to give everything we've got away to mission fields even, or to uh, to this church or that church down the road. We need to put money in its proper place. We're going to be dealing with that. Jesus said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I've got a brother-in-law that's a wonderful man, wonderful Christian. But he is letting the stock market drive him insane. Every day, he sits in front of his TV watching the stock market. He's retired. And, and he sits and watches the stock market. And of course, the last few years, it would drive anybody insane. The stock market would, but... Uh, we need to lay up our treasures in, in heaven, Jesus said. Because in, if you lay them up in heaven, hey, they're going to be safe. They'll be there. Yes. Amen? Amen. And then uh, verse 22, he talks about uh, the concerning light and darkness. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the and thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And then uh, uh, verse 24, he talks concerning masters. No one, our golden text again, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The term serve literally means to be enslaved. I know some folks that are enslaved to their money. Y'all know too. I hope I'm not looking at it, any of them. <laughs> but uh, they're enslaved to their money. Their money. That determines everything. That controls everything. Now, I don't go as far as Dave Ramsey. How many of you know Dave Ramsey? Yeah. Really. You've heard him on the radio and TV. He's the man that says you just should be in debt. And the only person I know that's not in debt is Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Everybody else is in debt. And uh, we will be. Working people have just there's no other way around it. Have to stay in debt. But actually, there's a scripture that said, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. We're not supposed to be in debt with one another with our love. We're supposed to love everybody. Them that despitefully use us, those that are mean to us, we're supposed to love them. And folks, I know it, it is not easy to love people that's mean to you. And, uh, if you don't believe that, just try pastoring sometime. And see, it's just not easy to love folks when they're mean to you. But Jesus said we are to love those that despitefully use us. And we're not to owe them any love, but to love them. Oh, hallelujah to God. I'm beginning to feel pretty good now shouting about money. But God help us to control our attitudes toward money and toward giving. The Lord, what Job say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
God gives the increase. God blesses us. And I, when I started out uh, over 40 years ago, Pastor Inago, the Sister Care was a little bitty girl, and her family was uh, came to church, supported the church. I remember one time that her mother blessed the pastor with a, an offering. Her old Sal had 10 pigs, and the pastor got one of them. And I had to raise that pig. That's not that, that. that. I'll tell you, that was a mistake if you want to call it a blessing. I raised that pig, and when I got it raised, I said, there's no way I can take a bite of old meat. I tried to him breathe. And, uh, but God gives the increase. And God blesses us. I, I used to teach those folks, and, and I'm teaching today, you can outgive God. The more you give to God, the more God's going to give to you. And I'm not just talking about in monetary value. When we give ourselves, unreservedly and untiredly to God. When we say, Lord, take me and use me. And I remember one time that I asked folks to pull their vehicle. And so we could start picking folks up for church. And we'd pray and come early and, and uh, they'd go out and pick people up before we had a bus and, and bring them in. We get to give ourselves to God. Yes, amen. Amen. There's a new song out that... Uh, uh, it's a crazy worship song. Uh, they sing, I give myself to you. And it's beautiful. We, we give ourselves to the Lord. And we can never give our finances to God until we give ourselves to God. Amen. But before we uh, give ourselves to God, we'll find all kinds of excuses and all kinds of reasons. God, you can't have my money because of this and this and this and this. But uh, one of my favorite scriptures is found in John chapter 6, verse 36, or maybe Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verse 36. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Yesterday morning, a man pulled up my driveway and said, Would you like some corn? And I said, Well, Yes. And I asked my wife, would you like corn? And she said, yes. I went out there and he probably gave me 10 bushels of corn. My goodness, I cut my finger chunking it. And, and uh, I, But hey, God, God blesses us. Glory to God. Yes, he does. A Friday morning, pulled in a place and a friend of mine said, would you like some tomatoes? And I said, well, oh yes, I love tomatoes. And they gave me a box that was that big, just heaped over to make I could hardly pick them up. Of course, that wouldn't have to be very big, but uh, God blesses us. <laughs> Woo! God sends the increase. God blesses us. Oh, hallelujah. And I got to say again, the more we give to God, the more God gives to us. So this lesson is saying, hey, we need to learn to manage our finances. I said to my younger son, and I'm not boasting, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, appreciative. Told me he made one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars last year, and I said, "Son, it's one thing to make it, but another thing to manage it. You've got to manage it." Amen. Yeah. And so the same applies to what God gives us. How God blesses us. He just says, here, do what you want to with it. But I want to tell you, the smart thing is to manage it and to give back to God. Amen. Sister Carrie's mother was determined, and I've had others in the church determine, that God got the first fruits of everything. Amen. Uh, verse 24, no man can serve two masters. That was our golden text. Let me move to the next one. Uh, then we've got to make wise our financial choices. I believe that everything we buy, everything we do, we've got to seek God. God, is this your will? God, you lead me and guide me. Don't let me make a mistake. Don't let me go the wrong way. Don't let me buy the wrong vehicle be uh, upset for years to come, making payments at the same time, being so upset about having 
to pay for a car I don't like. My oldest son said to me one day, Dad, I want you to come look at a car I'm considering buying and give me your opinion. I said, okay. I went and listened to it and the motor was as loose as a goose. I mean, you could hear it rattling. I'm no mechanic, but I, I, at that time I had good ears. And, and I said, David, I'd be afraid of it, son. I said, I'm just going to tell you, I, I, I wouldn't want it. He said, but Dad, I like it. And I said, well, but it's, it, you know, it's a pretty car, but it's not going to be pretty setting up the yard. And he said, but that's what I want. And I said, well, it's your choice. He bought it. Two or three weeks later, it set up the yard. The motor blew up in it. And uh, I wasn't glad that I prophesied that or predicted that. But uh, we've got to make wise financial choices. And we make them by having divine direction. God leading us and helping us and helping us not to go the wrong way. Oh, so many times. I, I can tell you experience after experience that, that I prayed and God has said, No! And at the time, I get so upset in my spirit. That's what I want to do. And later, to look back and say, My goodness! God knew what He was doing. For instance, I'll give you one for instance. I had preached my first revival. Scheduled in the same town to go, city to go to another church for another revival. Man walked up to me and said, I have looked nine years for a man of your caliber. I'd like to hire you to be the superintendent of my business. And uh, he said, you're just, you're just, all of your qualities, you're just what I want, what I've looked for. Money is no proposition, he said to me. He said, I'd like for you to come Sunday. You and your wife come to my home and, and we'll fix a meal and we'll, we'll talk to you about it. I preached my first revival now. And my wife, I went home and told her and she got so excited. This is your break you've been looking for. This is what you needed. This is what you, what I've always wanted for you. And the following Sunday, we went to his home. My gracious 25-room house. What you talk about a mansion? He had a mansion. And uh, we talked and it sounded so wonderful. Man, he just kept building me up and kept promising me uh, this and that. And I said, I'll pray about it and let you know. And on the way home, I said to my wife, No. This is a trick of the devil. No way. She said, This is what you've waited for. Now, by the way, she's not feeling well. That's the reason she's not with me. But uh, this is what you've been waiting for. And I said, Jimmy, this is a trick of the devil. So we settled it and left it at that. A year or so later, this man, is it, am I being, this, this man had some real, I'm just going to tell you, ended up prison. And had I joined in with him, I'd have been there too. Amen? Amen. We have to make wise financial choices. Just because it looks like gold, it may not be gold. Amen? Amen? Yes. <laughs> Woo! So God help us to appreciate Him. Listen, in uh, verse 9, of our lesson, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy princes shall burst out with new wine. When you honor God, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. When I was a young man and went first for my, my first examination for the ministry. I, I was asked the question in writing and then orally. How much of your income should be tied? I said 10%. I wrote 10%. They interviewed me, asked me again, how much of your income should be tied. What would you say? Oh. 
And I said to them again, 10%. And the answer was, all of your income should be tied. Not just, not just 10%, not 50%, not 75%, but all of your income should be tied. Now that's what the word said. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Honor him. Amen. And he'll honor you. He'll bless you. And there's a promise for this. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy princes shall burst out with new wine. Folks, I'm telling you, trust me, I've tried it. It works. It works. When we are obedient to the word, when we give as God and as, as God plans, it's God's plan, not man's, it's not the church's, it's God's plan. Honorable labor brings increase. When we give of ourselves unreservedly and untiringly, when we do our very best for God. It brings increase. And uh, so, verse 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. You know what debt brings? Yeah, we know. We've all been there. Debt brings servitude. And, and, Every one of us has been in debt. Don't, don't uh, think I'm preaching down to you. My Lord, I said to my wife uh, shortly after we'd been married, I, I, I wanted my bills paid. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I fuss about that. If they're not made, I get upset. But uh, I said to her one day, I, I, don't mind, I wouldn't mind owing a million dollars as long as I could make my payments. Oh, I. It looks like we're going to be in debt all our life anyway, so that really doesn't matter as long as we make payments. But when you sign a note, Brother Darrell, for a beautiful white car, <laughs> you become a servant. You've got to pay it. Or you'll have a bad name. You'll have a bad reputation. And I'm fussy about Christians paying their debts. I believe that Christians ought to be trustworthy. Nobody should have to bring a Smith Wesson 357 to your door and say, I want my money. Amen. Amen. Yes. I just believe that a person's word ought to be their bond. Amen. I still like the handshake. I believe a handshake ought to be sufficient. And it is for folks our age. But these young whippersnappers, now you got to carry a uh, 357 Smith Wesson for some of them. But, uh, Dad brings servitude. And we could say <laughs> that we're in debt to the Lord. But look what He's done for us. Amen. Amen. I, I could sing, I'd stop right here and sing every time I think about what the Lord has done for me. It makes me wonder why He loved me. <laughs> Amen. He came and gave His life for what? So that I could have life and life more abundantly. Yes, amen. He wants, he wants to bless us. It's His will that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. That's what the book says. He wants us to prosper. I knew that was going to happen. He wants us to prosper. Yes, He does. He wants us to be in good health. Amen. So, uh, I, I want to be a servant to the Lord. Yes. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower the borrower is servant to the lender. Verse 7 or scripture. Faithfulness brings reward. Well done thou good and faithful servant. Faithful servant. Faithfulness brings reward. Yes. God is going to reward the faithful. Yes, yes. Verse 9, And I say unto you, 
Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. <coughs> that when you fall, that you may receive unto you, or that you may receive you into everlasting habitation. I don't know that I've helped that. I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you to everlasting habitation. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful to the unrighteous man, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Amen? And giving to God, and I don't know what time you normally quit. We when we we stopped about ten fifteen. Just go and we feel like it. <laughs> feel like we've accomplished it. Alright. We must develop a generous spirit. <coughs> we don't need to fuss with God what we're going to give to God. We just need to give no way. I think now I've heard preachers say. You shouldn't give expecting God to give back to you. That, I don't agree with that. That's not what this book teaches. I believe what the Word says. The Word says when I give to the Lord, He's going to give back to me, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Now, if I believe John 3, 16, I've got to believe that God is going to give back to me. But that's not the reason I give. May it just make it an investment. I give out of love because I love God and I love His work and I love the church and, and I love helping others. A gracious woman retaineth honor and strong men retain riches. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth and there is that withholdeth more than is meat but is tenneth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall water be watered also himself. So God blesses his people. God wants us to give cheerfully. I don't know if it's to the extent some churches I go into, and pastor says that now it is time to receive the offering. And they say, I watch the folks that take their offerings down. If it's that exciting, why are you giving? Some folks just like to make a noise. In fact, I had a uh, lady teaching children's church once in uh, the church I was pastoring. And I, about this time in service, while well, I was preaching, wasn't teaching, I was preaching, and I heard a noise in the back. Woo, they were beating on metal chairs. Had the hammer sounded like beating on metal chairs. And after, it was loud. And hollered, and after service, I went to her and I said, what in the world is going on back there this morning? We were making a joyful noise to the Lord. I said, that didn't sound too joyful to me. <laughs> Amen? But anyway, we make a joyful noise to God. Oh, we, oh yeah, I got some. I just have to have change. This is what makes a joyful noise to God on Sunday morning. <laughs> get into the Lord. And now get him back. <laughs> that was just a, an analogy. <laughs> Metaphor, whatever you call it. But anyway... God wants us to, to give generously and cheerfully. Amen. Daniel Webster, Secretary of State under President Fillmore, was moody one day at a meeting gathering, and someone said to him, 
Mr. Webster, what is the most important thought that you've ever had? And everybody's ears were turned to hear Daniel Webster. His answer, answer made them all think. He said, the most serious thought that has ever occupied my mind was that of my individual responsibility to God. You know, I've watched the last 40 plus years I watched the change, the trend change in the church world. It used to be the church told you how to live. The church told you what you could do and couldn't do. And if you didn't do like the church wanted you to, then this fellowship. I remember those days. It was uh, you know, a list of do's and don'ts. But now through the years, that pendulum changed and swung over to an individual responsibility. Now, it's an individual thing. I live like I need to live by the word. Everybody has a choice. Live as loose as a goose. You can live like a Christian. You can believe in holiness or you can be a holiness fighter in the church. And the same applies to our managing our finances. It's my money. I do what I want to with it. You're exactly right. But uh, when you analyze what we're doing by what the Word says, then sometimes we have uh, to take another look and say, hey, the Bible said that if I rob God, It'll be the same, now I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but the gist is, if I rob God, it'll be the same as robbing this bank right up here. The only difference is, God's not going to put me in prison today. But there's coming a time when the book's going to be open. And we're going to be judged by this, not by church rules, but by the world. Judged right here. That's no, oh, and I'm going to be preaching on this a little bit. I'm excited about it. Thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for what He tells us and what He shows us and how He ministers to us and leads us and guides us. So God wants us to base our finance, financial management by the Word of God. Now I'm going to open for discussion from any of you. Anything you'd like to say? Any uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight, any one of you five that would like to uh, address the lesson? I'd like you to talk a little bit about that ninth verse. Okay. 16, 9. Okay. Luke 16, 9. says, And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Decode that for a lot of people. Okay. That it? That's pretty much it. I just... Uh, that... From, from, the way, from the way that I'm looking at it, and, and maybe I'm missing something, it says make friends of those uh, that have plenty. Is that what, it, is that what that's saying? Whether, whether they're righteous or whether they ain't, make friends with those that have plenty? Is that what that's saying? Make, make to yourself friends of the mammon, those that have plenty, even though they may be unrighteous? Well... I think that, uh, spiritually speaking, we're supposed to be friends with everybody. I, I'll agree, and we ought to show everybody the love of God, but is this saying make a, make a uh, well, it's saying to make friends with the mammon of unrighteousness. Is that being kind of a... a contradictive? Yeah. Well, not really contradictive. Is that, is that kind of like... Uh, 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 Lord, I can't even think of the word that I want to use for it. Uh, but I just uh, it, it seems to me like that would be 
saying whether they're righteous or whether they're unrighteous, as long as they got money, then when you fail, maybe they'll receive you into their house. Is that what that's saying to you? Well, let me answer it this way. I think that uh, when, I, when I started pastoring, there were many, many unrighteous people that supported my church. Uh, I've had people, I've had uh, funeral homes to give me checks for certain things we were going to do for projects and help us build the church. I think that uh, with being friends, and I don't know if I'm addressing your question, but I think being friends with people that have money is wise. Uh, I remember a time when I prayed, God, send some influential people into the church so that we can build a church. People that will attract others and uh, people that will have influence. And uh, I don't think that we're supposed to compromise. Not at all. But we're supposed to, we're supposed to have, reach out to folks that... Uh, I remember one time writing Elvis Presley a letter asking for a donation. Did I get it? No. <laughs> but I wrote him anyway. Sister Brenda. Well, a lot of sinners are come more helping you than a lot of Christians. I agree. Because when Denny's experienced it, we've been there. And we're supposed to help our brothers and sisters in need. Sure. And then the ones that don't claim to be the brother and sister to you are Christian. They're the one that show to be faithful to Mendinus. When we got slapped in the face by the one that hugged our neck on a Sunday morning and called us brother and sister. I would say if a man saith his brother in need and shutteth up his vows of compassion, how will the love of God in him? And it's like a lot of Christian people that I should say got a little more than the other. They kind of sh they they want to shy the ones that's less. They don't want to have nothing to do with the ones that's got a little less. Or those that might be struggling, the ones that's got a little more, it seems like we hang around with this crowd and they shy this, they, these. I've noticed that in the Christian churches a lot. But you take a sinner man that's got a little money and they see a lot of them will do this, they'll, they'll be there for you. They'll help you. And, and, I, and, and go back to what you were saying. They, you said something about there's a lot of people didn't claim to be a Christian that helped you a whole lot in the churches. Well, and, and, and the way you was praying and stuff. You know, a lot of times we just, want, we just need one person to be favor to us. God can send one person to be favor to you. Right. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I agree that uh, it, it's good to have friends with my... But I don't... I don't I, and I've seen people that don't claim to be Christians. And, and Linda has, has said it that, that has helped me and Linda because it seemed like every time that uh, uh, we would get back on our feet, something would... Uh, another test of our faith would knock me right back down again we have lost literally everything that we had three different times and had it not been for the grace of God we wouldn't have survived but God has helped us to make it but there have been people that have not claimed to be Christians that have helped us along the way whereas those that some that have claimed to be Christians did not were well, but there were some Christians that did help us to the best of their ability but how, how many of us knows that that Maybe God has given us an increase so that we might be able to help those. But regardless uh, of that, uh, technically speaking, and we all know that 
that if you make friends with the world, as long as you're up on their social level, they might. If you're, if they see somebody in need, yes, they've got a heart sometimes, and they'll help sometimes. But the truth of the matter is, is if you're not on their same social level, then they're not going to help you very often. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, when you start falling beneath their level, that's when they're going. You're going to lose that friend because they're after you for the for their appearances' sake. And it's become a lot like that in the church world today. If you ain't got as much money as I have, or you're struggling and I'm not, then I'm not going to associate with you except maybe in, in the church building. And it ought not to be. I agree. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Paul writes to the poverty-stricken church at Philippi. He said, But my God shall supply all of your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. However God wants to supply my need is His business. Exactly. He may do it through uh, you. He may do it through you or may do it through an outsider. However He supplies my need, that's all right with me. God will God will perform His work. And uh, let me tell you about the church. Uh, I, I believe in being benevolent. I believe we need to be very benevolent. Help everybody we can. But I want to tell you what I know, and, and please don't take this personal. I'm not, I, I want to tell you in advance, I'm not referring to y'all or anybody in this room. Some people you can't help. So that's the reason we're teaching, I, I suppose, managing our finances. Now, when people go out, and, and this used to be a, a pet peeve to me, when folks would take money that they receive and buy booze, beer, uh, cigarettes, I, I, I'm not going to support that. I'm not Amen. going to enable. I'm not going to be an enabler right. and, and support somebody's habit was taking money that I give to them. I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I'm not going to pay for somebody else's. And uh, so we, the church has to manage finances as well as individually. We've got to manage them. I was very strong in, in benevolence and had a benevolence committee. And I'd say to them, we can't do too much now. We can do too little. We can't do too much. And I had a committee that would uh, make sure that every need was taken care of. I, rem I remember growing up. I've heard my daddy say this many a times. I had an uncle who was an alcoholic. Daddy tried to help him in so many ways. He took preachers after preachers to his house. And, I, and I've heard my daddy say this many a times. Don't give an alcoholic money. Yeah. If they need groceries, you Go feed them. Groceries. You feed them. Right. And a lot of times I've heard my daddy say, uh, Marty, do, you, we, do we have a little extra canned stuff? What's in that deep freeze out there? And we share our food with the neighbors or with someone that he knew that needed it and he, his heart was tugging at him to do this. Right. And, I, and, I, and I grew up in a home where my mother would fix something and she'd fix it and she would repair it and she'd say, take this over to sister so-and-so, the neighbor. And I said, but mama, we need that. She says, don't argue with me. Take this over there and tell them that I send it and that would be there and tell them that uh, that I send it is I send it, and uh, and I said yes, mother, and I would take it and I would give it to him, and she says, and when I give it to him, see I learned you learn things by experience, mm -hmm. and your parents can help you, and church people can help you learn when you become when you're growing up, and and when I knock on the door. And I had this bowl of food. And I'm wondering in my little mind, why is my mother giving our food away? And, and I knock on that door and I said, my mother said to give this to you. She repaired it for you. And she told me to give it to you. And she would take that bowl of food and she says, tell your sweet mama thank you. And now I don't have to worry about what I'm going to fix for my children. And I go home and I tell my mother, I said, Mama, 
she said to thank you that she didn't have to worry about what she was going to have to fix for supper to feed her children. She says, I know. And I said, Mama, how did you know that? She says, she says, Linda, she says, when you pray and talk to God, God will talk to you. And a lot of times, God will lead us on our heart who to bless yes. and how to bless, what to give and what not to give, and how to, how to bless somebody. And my daddy always talked, told us, when you see someone in need, you see someone needing clothes, you go to your closet and you give them some clothes. Don't give them money to buy them, uh, to buy, go buy them clothes. He said they may not buy them no clothes. If you see a drunker that's hungry or their family needing food, he said you go, you go give them food. He says they are a sinner and, and they, all they know is to sin. They're a drunker and all they know to do is drink. And he says, a lot of we, we have to sh- show the love of God, but we, God wants us to have wisdom to know how to show that love. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Again, being repetitious, but the church has to manage the finances like we do individually. This church cannot support everybody that drives up and down this highway that's out of gas. If they're out of gas, then they stay home. Unless it's an emergency or something of that nature. And nine out of ten, 99 out of 100, if it comes up for gas money, they'll have a sad story to tell. So lots of times, in fact, it should be most times, we go by a discernment. We discern whether or not it's of God, whether or not it's right. And uh, so we need to, uh, we need to, do everything we can for everybody we can but there comes a time I'm thinking of a family that uh, my wife and I emptied our freezer many times for this family they had about four or five grown men living there not a word and we did that finally one day I said to her wait a minute these men are as able to work as I am I worked at three jobs at that time they're as able to work as I am. And so uh, we're going to let them, uh, we've helped them all we're going to. We're going to let them manage their own affairs from here on. So yes, it's, uh, you got to be, the church has to be compassionate. The church has to be benevolent. But uh, we've got to manage the finances like, uh, uh, well, even closer than we do our own. Amen? Good study, good lesson.